The Tigers guarantee a series split against the first place Minnesota Twins. We will gladly take it. Let's talk about it all today on Locked On Tigers. You are Locked On Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked on Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Thursday, August 10th, 2023. Thank you so much for making Locked on Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on MLB for $20 off of your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed also be sure to check out the Sirius XM Tigers broadcast on the Sirius XM app it's the home broadcast for the Detroit Tigers easy stuff just search Detroit Tigers you get the home broadcast okay now let's talk about a baseball game what is back what is back what is back everybody welcome back what is up etc Tigers win at nine to five nine to five it's a good song Tigers win nine to five over the Minnesota Twins at home on Wednesday evening, uh, heck of an evening. I mean, golly, you got Miguel Cabrera with a lot of hits. You got Spencer Torkelson with a couple home runs. Michael Lorenzen on, you know, the east side of the country throwing a no-hitter. We got a lot to go over, all right? And, and you know, I mean, Alex Fiedo, a lot to talk about there as well. We got a loaded slate here today. And, and I, games like this really remind me of why... There is still so much to play for in these last two months. Not wins and losses, right? I mean, yes, you you don't want to instill a losing culture. You want to go out there and win every night still. But what you are playing for at this point is the continued development of a lot of players and to carry momentum into an offseason for a lot of players. And that's very, very important. If it wasn't, then they would just throw the last two months away and just throw out nobodies, right? No jokes, about this team already being full of nobodies. No one make the joke, all right? I better not see it in any comments. Don't say it, all right? Be the bigger person. Don't say it, all right? It's funny, but don't say it, okay? Um, where do we start? Let's start with Miguel Cabrera and Spencer Torgelson. Let's start with uh, the, the the main event of the evening, what would probably be those two. Spencer Torgelson goes two for four with a walk. Both of those two hits were home runs. And Miguel Cabrera goes three for four and gets a standing ovation as he gets pulled for a pinch runner in the seventh. Uh, let's start with Miggy. I, I mean, I, I said it a little bit yesterday, but it's worth just reiterating really as often as we can from here on out. It's really, really wild. We only have like six or seven weeks left, man. How crazy. That's such a weird feeling. Miguel Cabrera will not be a Tiger ever again in less than two months that's heavy that's really heavy and and so I'm gonna not take for granted any of these moments you know so many people myself included were really worried about him at the beginning of the season his first six weeks were just absolutely dreadful they showed a uh, a stat on the Bally broadcast after the game where since May 30th he's hitting like 330 That's over two months sitting. And now he has no power. He doesn't really draw walks anymore. But he is still a hitter at heart, man. He is still just a, he's a singles machine, seriously. And and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. His average after this game was up to 264. That was the fourth highest batting average in the lineup tonight. Love that man. We'll save uh, we'll save the deep sentimental stuff for as we get closer and closer to the end of the road. But like I said, you just don't know how many more moments like this you really have of Miguel Cabrera. How many more three hit nights in Comerica do we have left? I know it's scary. So always good to see the big fella, uh, the big guy, as Jim Price used to say, rest in peace. Um, and then Spencer Torkelson, two for four with a two homers. Um, so the one homer was just he smoked a hanging breaking ball to left field. 
I say just. I'm going to gladly take any homer I can, not trying to just mully over one of them. But the the really the fascinating one was the first one because it was opposite field. That is only his second opposite field home run in his major league career. And A.J. Hinch made some fascinating comments after the game. Uh, I always listen to A.J.'s postgame pressers. Uh, to see, you know, where he stands and and any questions that I have a lot of the time, our, our amazing beat writers here will ask, um, you know, similar questions as well. So uh, it, it's always fascinating to listen to him and, and hearing him talk about Torkelson. You know, he mentioned his, his exact quote was something on the lines of when I first heard about Spencer Torkelson, I was told and and uh, was shown that he would have power to all fields. And that's just been so the opposite of his major league career. And Hinch mentioned that uh, he might have got discouraged from that because of a lack of results, hitting the ball the opposite way. And now we're at a point where it's, I mean, honestly, within the Tigers community, we talked about uh, we talked about Jerry on Twitter, right, at OPS and Heimer. Uh, still a fantastic follow that I highly recommend if you're a Tigers fan. Um And uh, he's just, you know, showed the numbers and was like, look how much better his numbers are when he hits the ball in the air to the pull side of the field. And so to see him go an opposite field home run that he got, he got a hold of it and he knew it like off bat. Right. And and to intentionally drive the ball out that way, I think not, you know, I'm not saying like one swing is going to change his season or anything like that. And uh, I'll give my full thoughts on Torgelson and where he stands currently here in a second, but it was just really interesting. That's all. I, that's all I'm trying to say is it was really fascinating how unique and rare of an instance that is, and what potentially were like. I don't know. Did he make an adjustment? Like we'll see. The next week will be very telling, but definitely an anomaly in, in the career of Spencer Torkelson. So we'll see what stems from it. Um, Torkelson as a whole, you know, I, the, the since the All Star break, he's been disappointing again in the last week and a half or two weeks. He's really struggled again. We talk about it all the time. Like this dude just really has not found consistency at the major league level. And often with development, we see struggle. eh, And then like the next step is like, yeah, there's some, there's some good. uh, And then there's like not so good. And then you find the consistency. And I'm not saying that like, you know, that that's guaranteed around the corner or anything like that. But even when looking at Torgelson in the minor leagues, he would get called up. He would struggle. Then he would hit the ball pretty well, and then he would go supernova. And we just have not seen the supernova yet at the major league level. And and certainly I'm not trying to convince you that like that's coming because of a two home run game. Like he has a lot to prove before I think a lot of people are like fully on board with him. Um, But this game alone raised his OPS like almost 20 points. (laughs) So uh, back up to a 710 OPS on the season. It's still below league average. Still hasn't been what we expected. Um, But there is uh, still like signs of life. This isn't just like, oh my goodness, this dude is, is, you know, a hundred percent never going to be anything. Like we got another off season for him to work on some stuff. And, uh, and, and you see the flashes. It's just that they, they are that they are flashes. They're not sustained, consistent success. And when he gets to that, obviously is when he's really going to pop. So um, we'll keep an eye on it. Let's talk about the rest of the offense. Uh, we'll do that right after I tell y'all about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is the definition of clutch. You can get images of your seat before you buy, so you're not really guessing. You know exactly where your seat is. And most importantly, you can kind of forget planning months in advance for events. You can, uh, for Game Time, you can get tickets up until the event right? Whether it's basketball, football, baseball, concerts, comedy clubs, theater, it doesn't matter. They have tickets for everything and you can get them up to the last second, thus the name game time. And so it, uh, again, I, I tell you all the time about how clutch it is, but I mean, I, I used it to my advantage very recently, just last week. So um, I, I it's genuinely something I, I highly recommend and uh, something that you will be very, very grateful you have literally in your back pocket on your phone. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCK that MLB for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. I appreciate y'all for tuning in, making us your first listen every day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. I appreciate you all greatly. We'll be back tomorrow recapping the fourth and final game of this series against the Minnesota Twins. Um, let's uh, let's talk about the rest of the offense. So Matt Veerling deserves a shout out, but we're going to save him until after this. Um, Kerry Carpenter, a couple of knocks, a walk, just a fantastic night. Uh, continues to just be a pure hitter like that, that this dude just wakes up and he hits man. And I absolutely love it. How can you not in an offense that has been dreadful for two years now, we will gladly take a dude that just wakes up and all he thinks about is hitting, you know, um, Riley green with one hit and one walk. We'll take it. Uh, Javi Ofer, Zach McKinstry, a three hit night. He has been really, really struggling since like the beginning of June at this point. So seeing him go out there and have a good night was, was great to see. Uh, he didn't get in a lot of two strike counts that, uh, allowed a pitcher to throw a curveball at his ankle. So we'll see if, uh, if that's an adjustment that was made or just a one-off kind of fluke night, but regardless, nice to see. And then a huge tip of the cap. To Eric Haas, there has been no surprise. This season has been really, really brutal for Eric Haas at the plate. And so to just see him, I mean, just by all accounts, seems like a fantastic dude. And just like the fan in me is just very happy for Eric Haas. Whether this is his last two months in a Tigers uniform or whether he turns around and, and just, you know, magically becomes like July of 2022 Eric Haas again. I have no clue what the future holds for him, but um, it, it's just, well, <laughs> I'm sure he's saying the same thing. We'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, I do want to talk about Matt Reeling. Three for five with a triple in this ball game. Had a great night at the plate, um, and his OPS is now up to 724. About a league average hitter, just under league average hitter on the season now. Uh, 272 average. You know, I, I he had been slipping a little bit. Now, we talked about, it, I think, literally on yesterday's show, maybe two days ago. Um, but he had been slipping a little bit. And so to have him have a nice night is good. Uh, it, he's just, he's he's solid. He's a, a solid baseline. Going to give you one and a half-ish war over a season. And, like, if, if you're a longtime listener of the show, you remember last winter where I, I you know, threw a fit on air because I was just begging for someone to be a two win player. I just wanted a two war player, not an all-star. I don't need a three, four, five, six. I don't need a nine war MVP candidate. I just wanted some people that were out, could go out there and be solid above average, like above replacement level ball players. And Matt Beerling has certainly been that. Now, if you want to talk about the Gregory Soto trade as a whole, I, I think it's hard to really argue that that's been super great. For the Detroit Tigers up to this point, again, only the future will hold really uh, the you know the, the true outcome as time goes on. But right now, it's not looking fantastic. Um, but that being said, I'm 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 happy Veerling's here, and even if his ceiling is only like a fourth outfielder, which is kind of where I'm at, uh, like the the worst of three outfielders or a really really good fourth outfielder uh, on a good team that is, uh, I, I don't care. He he's tooled up, man. He 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 has the ability to to drive the ball. He's a he's a great athlete and that transitions us into the other part which is he played third base today and made a really really good play and he didn't look completely lost out there uh he is an athlete and um uh, castellani said the same thing like this sh my my fast not fascination but my my passion rather for veerling to get a lot of time at third base the remainder of the season is not because i think matt veerling is the third baseman of the future uh, it, it's because I think Matt Veerling could be an incredible super utility player for this team long term, right? If you get a guy who is a league average hitter that is super fast and he's athletic enough to play all three outfield positions and even a couple infield positions, that's a guy that every team in the league would want. So uh, I, I want to see him continue getting reps at third. He looked really good tonight, made a fantastic play on the backhand, one that he screwed up a couple of nights ago. Has, a, has an arm to do it too. He's got tools to be a positive contributor to a good baseball team, even if that's not like an 162-game center field starter. Um, so just want to give a shout out to Matt Veerling. Good, good on you. Good on you, bud. Solid third baseman, Matt Veerling. Um, next up, let's, let's switch to the pitching. 
All right, let's switch to the pitching side of things. Alex Fiedo starts this game. He goes four and two thirds, four hits, three earned runs, two walks, five strikeouts, and two home runs against. Uh, th- this looked like an Alex Fiedo outing to me. Like, th- this is not, uh, this is, I realize I've been saying this a lot lately. I don't know why. This is not rocket science, right? Like, this is, uh, this is the exact outing you point to when you go, well, why do you think Alex Fiedo is a reliever? I don't think he's a reliever in a negative connotation. Everybody takes that as like some big offensive thing. Like every team needs good relievers. There are only a select few that end up being really solid long-term major league starters. That's an exclusive group. Okay. And it's very, very valuable to have good relievers. And the reason that this start is like the poster child for that is because you saw the swing and miss stuff. You saw the flashes of, of strikeouts and, and being able to get a swing and miss really whenever it, it, it the situation called upon it. But you also saw home runs and walks and the ball being hit all over the yard. in less All in less than five innings. He didn't even go five. He has a slider that will play. That's my biggest reason as to why I think he will be a a, a good reliever not just oh you got to put him in the bullpen because he sucks like no he, he can be a really good reliever but he he doesn't have enough of an arsenal to be a long-term major league starter in my eyes and his ERA is now 5-8 on the season most of those innings almost all of those innings coming as a major league starter and we're what seven years removed, six years removed from him being drafted. Like I, I, I and again, if you want to take the rest of the season and just as a development thing, let him try to be a starter and see what happens. I'm all for it. These last two months are all about development to me. But long term, this is this is why I, I, a lot of people, not just me, but myself included, think that this dude could be an effective reliever. The slider had. Eight whiffs in this ball game on 17 swings. That means almost half of the times that this ball that this pitch was swung at, it was swung and missed at. That's incredible. The slider had a 46% CSW percentage, 10 called strikes. That is unbelievable. Almost half of the sliders he threw, which was 40, by the way were either a called strike or a swinging miss strike. That is a legitimate weapon. That is a plus-plus pitch at the major league level, and it always has been. We've known that since he was in Florida, right? So that's great. The issue is the four-seam fastball got put in play seven times, was whiffed at zero times, and of the seven times, it's not a small number, seven times it was put in play, put in fair territory, The average exit velocity against it was a 99 and a half miles an hour. Every single fastball that was, that hit a bat in this game was absolutely smoked and he had zero whiffs to go along with that. And the changeup, he only throws, you know, significantly less than the other two. He's basically a two pitch pitcher that can occasionally throw you off with a changeup. Sounds like a really good potential even high leverage reliever. I, I really I'm I'm trying to drive home the point that like I'm not like giving up on him or thinking he's awful. There's a big difference between major league starters and major league relievers. And I think his profile is would be a lot more beneficial out of the bullpen for this team and for himself. But if they're going to keep rolling him out there, I, I, I don't hate it. I, I'm I'm all about development. And if they think that there's still some stuff that they can work on with him and try and prove me wrong, please be my guest. It's more beneficial for everybody, if Alex Fajardo is uh, well, maybe not, but it's more you know if he can be a starter, you, you need you can always use starters. All right, um, let's talk about the bullpen. Then we'll talk about Brennan White a little bit uh, specifically. There's just one thing I really want to drive home about Brennan White. Something clicked in my in my brain uh, as to why I've been frustrated watching Brennan White. Uh, and then we're going to end the show by talking about Michael Lorenzen as a no hitter for the Philadelphia Phillies in his first game in Philadelphia as a Philly. Uh, We'll talk about all that right after this. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment 
of Locked On Tigers. I appreciate you all for tuning in, making us your first listen every day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We'll be back tomorrow, as you all know, recapping the final game of the Twin Series. Also, be sure to check out the Tigers home radio broadcast on the Sirius XM app. Just search Detroit Tigers, and you get the Tigers home broadcast. It's a pretty cool feature. Be sure to check it out today. All right, so the bullpen. Uh, we're going to do everyone except Brennan White. Uh, Vasquez got one out, but he got one out, so good for him. Uh, Brennan White we'll talk about in a second. Tyler Holden, two and a third. One walk, three strikeouts, no hits, no runs. 1.83 ERA. This is, it's it's unbelievable. It's absurd in the best possible connotation. Like, I, I he deserves all the credit in the world, and this coaching staff deserves all the credit in the world, man. We'll talk about the coaching staff a little bit later when we talk about Lorenzen, but like, Golly, what an absolutely phenomenal story. Tyler Holton has ended up being, and I think that Hinch for using him in, in great situations, but also Fetter Nieves Lund, who I shout out all the time on this show, deserve a ton of credit. Um, but obviously, first and foremost, flowers to Tyler Holton himself for uh, putting in work and coming out here and putting together legitimately one of the better <laughs> seasons any reliever in the American League has had this season. Just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Trey Winginter, two-thirds of an inning, one hit. We're on one run, two walks, and a strikeout. Uh, command has been a huge issue for this dude all season. Uh, I know a lot of people kind of forgot about him because he was injured for so long. But, you, you know, reach back in your memory bank and look. remember April and remember a series against Toronto in which he was the closer. Uh, because we hadn't really established who the closer was going to be yet. And he was just throwing the ball all over the place and walked in at wild pitched in a run and walked in a run. And it was just a disaster. Um, and, and he couldn't close the door in this one for the same reason. So uh, as much as I like his stuff, uh, if, I mean, if there's no command here, then there's no command here. Um, but this was a flyer, an, one of many flyers that Scott Harris took uh, coming into this season. So we'll see what he does the last two months. Uh, honestly, when Foley comes back, he might just get be the, the guy that's sent down to AAA. He was recalled for Foley, who's on the bereavement list, uh, dealing with the uh, a loss in his family. So wishing him nothing but the best until he's supposed to come back to the team this weekend. But obviously, he'll take as much time as he needs, as he should as well. Um, Jose Cisnero, one-third of an inning, one hit, no runs to his name. No walks, one strikeout, uh, close the door. Yeah, he looked fine, whatever. I mean, yeah, I still don't know why he's here, but like, we'll, we'll take it. Um, the fastball looked good. He was fired up after the game. Love to see some passion out of him. Um, looking the best he's looked, honestly, probably since, oh, geez, 2021. That was his really good year. Um, okay, let's talk about Brennan White really quickly, then we'll get to Michael Lorenzen. So, uh, Brennan, I, I figured out while watching this outing, I figured out what made me not upset. That's too dramatic, but I love Brendan white. I, I do. Uh, he's, he's been on the show. I think his stuff is absolutely filthy. I think he's a student of the game that wants to continue trying stuff and getting better. I, and from a pure baseball perspective as well, like I said, like nasty stuff, really, really nasty stuff. Um, but he hasn't really put it like he has a five, four, six ERA. Like he hasn't really put together a phenomenal uh, major league campaign so far. And I, I was just, I was trying to figure out why, because like there's been some command issues without a doubt. And, and I've talked about those before and pretty honestly at, at length, we've talked about those on this show, right? Like he, he has a tendency that the slider when it's low and away to righties, I, I should use glove side, arm side, when it's glove side. Uh, it has the ability to be really effective, but it creeps up into the strike zone quite a bit. And while that is still very much a a, a problem that he's going to have to deal with, I also realized while watching this game, I don't like the shape of it against lefties. And that was a that was a a light bulb type of moment that I have. Like I, I was just I was watching. I was watching his outing. I think it was Willie Castro, actually, who obviously uh, took his ABs as a left-handed hitter. And there was a slider. And again, it was not located well, really. But it just, it seemed to break right into the barrel. And, and again, like if he's locating it well at the end of the day, 
it, it, it's going to be a much more effective pitch than it has been. But that was just something while I was watching, I was like, I feel like against righties, you can do that, especially if you're hitting that spot low and away. But against lefties, even if you are, I feel like that's a tough pitch to really, as a right-handed pitcher, to really succeed with against lefties. And so I'm, I'm going to have to do more of a deep, I'm recording this right after the game. I'll do a little bit more of a deep dive and, and we'll, we'll see how the rest of the, the last two months of the season play out. And uh, we'll do player breakdowns at the end of the season. We'll do like, you know, deep dives on everybody on the roster after the season ends, just like we do after every year. Um, and, and we'll kind of go a little bit more in depth on that, but that, that was just something I noticed. I was like, man, like that, that thing is just up there for lefties. Like that thing really is, is it seems to be very easily hittable, but, uh, maybe it is just a, maybe it is just a command thing, but that was just something I noticed in, in a couple of at bats. Um, and yeah, his, I mean, he, he gave up a hit and a run, uh, in this outing. And again, his ERA is almost five and a half at this point. So, um, kind of got a little shaky there at bullpen management as well. Uh, I, not that it was bad or anything, but it was a close game and we weren't going to use Jason Foley. Obviously he's not with the team and Alex Lang has really struggled. Um, I, I'm glad the Tigers scored more runs, I guess is my point. I'm glad the offense showed up today and made a, a close game, not a close game. I think that's everything for this ball game. Let's talk about Michael Lorenzen, Michael Lorenzen in his first start as a Philly in Philadelphia not his first start as a Philly, period, but his first start in Philadelphia as a Philly throws a no-hitter. Uh, his mom and his wife and his daughter were all in attendance, and it was just a really, really awesome moment. And I want to split this in half, okay? I, I want to talk about this using the analyst half of my brain and then talk about this using the fan half of my brain because – I, I am a fan first and foremost, but um, I, I am also now uh, an analyst as well. And so like when when talking about really cool moments like this, I, I want to be very clear about which side of my brain I'm using because they say very different things when when moments like this happen. So let's start with the analyst part because that's a, a little more cold hearted. All right. That's a little more uh, not sour. It's a no hitter. It's an awesome moment. But. Uh, that that one's uh, not as you know emotional and and happy go lucky. So the first off, I just don't subscribe to the oh my goodness he did it right after we traded him. This is the worst thing ever. Uh, you know, like classic Tigers. Look what happened after he left. Like I, I mean, I guess, <laughs> but we we just had. I mean, it's not like we haven't had a no hitter in like 15 years. Like we just had one a year and a half ago. Uh, we just had a combined no hitter a couple of months ago. I don't know. Like I, 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 <laughs> I, I don't really understand that mindset of just like, look, like it's not like he was garbage here and then he left and he turned into a Cy Young candidate. It's one cool start after an All Star first half he had for the Detroit Tigers. He didn't give up a single run for a month wearing our uniform. Like it's not like this is like. Oh my goodness, out of nowhere. Like, oh, he everybody gets good after they leave. Like, he was great here. This was a massively successful signing. So that was already kind of weird to me that a lot of people were doing that. But whatever, to each their own. You guys know how I am at this point. Everybody fan however you want to be a fan. That's uh, I that's what I support. But um, so I, I want to start with that. But then I, I want to talk about how much of a success story this is for the Detroit Tigers. And, and uh, the fan part of me, we'll, we'll talk about Lorenzen individually in a second, but the Tigers analyst side of my brain is like, what a great selling point for any pitching free agent going forward. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday and, and we referenced uh, a Castellani quote as well. Like this is Eduardo Rodriguez comfortably the best season of his career this season with the Detroit Tigers Michael Lorenzen nobody else would even guarantee Michael Lorenzen a starting spot in a rotation last last winter we gave him a one-year prove-it deal and the, he cited the reason he picked this place was because a like money talks I'm sure at the end of the day but b they guaranteed a starting spot in the rotation same thing with Matt Boyd unfortunately he got injured so 
what a what a great story Scott Harris said, right? And I've had my issues with Scott Harris so far this year. But he said in the offseason, we want players to get better here. And Michael Lorenzen, on his way out, right after we had traded him, said, Scott Harris told me the same thing. Want to come in, want to get better, and that will help both of us down the road. And that's what happened. The Tigers got a solid return for half a season of Michael Lorenzen, and now he is pitching comfortably the best baseball of his career as a starter, and he has probably opened a whole new world to his market that nobody, himself included maybe even, I don't know, I'm sure he believes in himself and whatnot, but that a lot of people never would have expected. And so I think that right there, going forward is a is a great sign of of hope and optimism within this organization this team still can't score runs i know they just put up nine tonight they're still the 29th ranked offense in baseball they have a long way to go before i'm like wow this team's gonna win a world series like you know what i mean we're, we're still a far way away from that but chris fetter juan nieves robin lund i cannot stop saying those three names enough what they have done to the optics from the outside, the national outlook of this organization and this pitching staff cannot be understated. And that's incredibly exciting. And also, again, absolutely should give you some optimism about the pitching side of things with this team going forward. Now, you still need talent. You still need to go find players that, that you know, you can't just give them a, a, a bunch of, I don't know, like – pick a pick a, a not everybody on this team has like a two ERA I guess is my point right like you still got to give them still got to give them talent to work with so that they can truly maximize that and just turn a good pitcher into a great pitcher see Eduardo Rodriguez but it, it that was really really th- this was a an a, cul- a culmination it, it almost felt like of like dang like Michael Lorenzen really has had a phenomenal season and now he has got a no-hitter under his belt as well, using what this coaching staff helped, I don't want to say teach him necessarily, but helped utilize him in. So that's awesome. Now the fan path of my brain is just so happy for Michael Lorenzen. Right? I mean, what a what an easy guy to root for. And what an awesome moment. I'm sure that all the guys in the clubhouse, the Tigers clubhouse, are going to be calling him and sending him texts later. I, I, This fan base really was online, seemed to be super happy for him. Uh, and baseball is just the best. It, it, it's just the best. I, his mom there talking about how his father who passed away a couple of years ago and what he would say to him right now, his wife and his daughter. He got a major league debut from a guy who spent seven years in the minor leagues playing in this game. His first game, he hits a homer and then is a part of a no-hitter. He got real Muto, the emotions from him catching a no-hitter. You got Nick Castellanos hitting his 200th career home run. I mean, just, it's, it's, it's just, there's no other sport like it. And there's no other feeling like the beautiful game of baseball, man. And I, and I know that that's there, this like, doesn't mean anything. And I'm just like rambling about how much I love a sport, but like, I, I, I don't know how you can watch that and not just think. This is the best game that's ever been created. Gets me feeling every single emotion, furious, happy to tears, emotional. Just the absolute best, man. And moments like that with someone who was part of our community and will forever be, I think, kind of adored, by the Tigers fans. Beautiful. Nothing like it, man. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. We'll be back tomorrow recapping the fourth and final game of the series, a day game 
for uh, the, my listener who always asks me about, not always, one time asked me about uh, saying start times to games. A 110 Eastern start for you. Uh, Kenta Maeda against Reese Olsen. We'll see how Reese Olsen's fastball looks. We'll see if he goes sinker a little bit more. Last outing, he went more sinker than four-seam fastball. We'll see what, he, what he's offering in this one. And uh, then Kenta Maeda, who got off to an awful start the first month and a half of the season, then got hurt since returning from the IL, has been fantastic. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, if you can go take three or four from Minnesota, that'd be pretty darn cool. I think that would be a nice message sent to the clubhouse and, and the fans in this organization that this season is not just like we're rolling over. Uh, taking it to the division leaders in August would be pretty cool. But guaranteeing a split anyways, so we'll take it. Um, thank you for this opportunity to continue talking about the game that I very clearly love. <laughs> Nothing like it, man. And uh, And I know that a lot of you agree, which is why you're here. So appreciate y'all. See you tomorrow. Peace and love. Going to Therapy's Dope. I'll catch you all then, baby. Go Tigers.